Hey, what's up guys? Shuckle King here, bringing you a little series that we're going to have for Draft Premier League Battle of the Week. This series is going to highlight a particular game that I think is going to be pretty interesting, and we're going to analyze it with uh, someone that I think is also pretty interesting. Uh, we're going to change out the person every week, uh, so let me know below who you would suggest to uh, maybe continue this series with. But for week one, we got Manny Bralick. Say hello. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me, Shuck. Oh, yes. This is uh, this could be pretty hard to top. I mean, Manny Brolic's like the top of the top. Cream of the cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, maybe give a little bit of introduction in case people don't know who you are. So they call me the BBB. Um, I've been playing draft <laughs> format for a, lo a long time now. And... Um, I run the league called UDL along with Carson and yeah, I've just been playing for a while. So I have some experience in gen seven is um, either there. my favorites here or close to uh, close with aura. So um, yeah, this should be fun. Oh no, sun and moon is definitely the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's okay. Yeah. Maddie was uh, in NPL when it was, and his heyday uh so definitely a very experienced battler one of one of the the all-time greatest um so yeah a quick introduction to what the series is uh, so week one we are looking at as you can see here we're gonna look at ii versus rob jr um ii is probably among the most accomplished if not probably top three most accomplished sun and moon battlers of dpl uh i could let me see if i could pull up the all-time records he is number two in the ranking, so definitely pretty impressive. And Rob Jr., uh, not sure if you guys know him, but has a lot of experience, especially in Smogon and in Draft. Uh, both are also a part of UDL. Oh, that's pretty funny. So uh, definitely two experienced battlers there for sure. And did Rob Jr. won? Did he win BPL last two seasons ago? Or UDL two seasons ago? Yeah, he won UDL season two. Yeah. To season two, yep. Uh, so yep, I think they were both in this. I think they were in the semifinals too. So that was. Um, oh yes. This is the rematch. I totally forgot about that. Oh man, yeah, this is going to be a pretty hype game then, um, and hopefully we can try to provide you a pretty hype game here. So how the format's going to work is we're going to talk about the game like we we have been. Um, we're going to do a quick mock battle before the game. It's definitely not going to be as high of quality as what they're going to provide us, but a pretty brief overview of what we think we would be bringing into this game. Uh, and then we're going to watch the game live, and hopefully we don't have to roast them. All right, so this is the team builder. Uh, I'm on Rob Jr.'s side. Matty Bralick has II's side. Uh, and I think I like Matty's side more than, uh, than my side, Rob's side on this. Uh, I feel like... There's not a ton of creativity in terms of what I could have. Like, Mega Dancy's cool, but maybe outside of like a Calm Mind set, there's not a, or like just a defensive rock set, I guess. There's not a ton I think Mega Dancy could do in addition to like what my set is here. Maybe like Sub Endeavor, or I was even debating like Explosion on the set, but I want Mega Dancy to stay alive this game, so Explosion wasn't gonna work. Um, Weavile, pretty straightforward what it does. Um, not much creativity there. Heatran, it is Z access, so it could be like Z solar beam to maybe hit a Mega Gyarados if that's a switch in, but that kind of seems eh. Uxi, I guess, could be like Calm Mind, but outside of that, you're going to be probably pretty defensive. And I think like a rock set, uh, something to handle the Infernape type of deal. Uh, Gastrodon's going to be some type of defensive set, most likely. Gliscor has a little bit of versatility, could be like probably physically defensive this game uh, with like Fire Fang and Earthquake as the coverage, but that's tough because then then regular Gyarados just goes in. So, uh, and Ursaring, Ursaring is just the greatest. So it'll it'll find a way to do stuff this game. But um, yeah, I just like II's versatility with Celesteela. It could go physical or special. It's probably gonna be like a Autonomize Z with Grass Flying and Earthquake. Like, I could see that coming in this game. Like, Giga Drain, Fly, Earthquake, I think is pretty solid in this game. Infernape could be Scarf, but I think it's going to be physically defensive to handle the Weavile. Zygarde could be Banded. I really don't have a switch into Banded, but it could also be Z. 
Though I, I think it's a little less likely. I think it could be like a sub coil or sub dragon dance set. Yuxi, um, just a great pivot into any of those top three or the Mega Gyarados. Mega Gyarados honestly can just click Waterfall, Crunch, Ice Fang, uh, Dragon Dance or sub, something like that. Seems like really nice in this game. Um, don't think Lantern comes. Garboder could come if it's like T-Spice because this team doesn't have a Grounded Poison. And I don't know if I want a Mega Dante to take on Garboder in that type of role. Whimsicott, I don't think it's that great, but it probably comes as the sixth mod in this game just to have something faster than Mega Dante and go for like a pretty strong grass move. Um, so yeah, that's why I have mine special defense. I'm probably not going to live a Whimsicott hit anyway at the Mega Dante. Um, but Diamond Storm should 2 a KO to Celesteela if I have rocks up and as long as Celesteela is not physically defensive. Um, so yeah, Celesteela is not a switch into this. Um, Psychic should kill the Infernape after rocks, I, I hope so, but I don't think Infernape's gonna have anything that kills me, unless it's like HP Steel, which I would doubt because I have a Gliscor, so I don't think you're gonna run Hidden Power or Steel. Um, it might run Metal Claw, I guess. I don't know what, what Steel moves Infernape has. Um, Moonblast should do pretty decent damage to like the Zygarde. I kind of need it for that. Um, I don't do a whole lot to Yuxi, but outside of that, I think this does okay damage. Um, against the Gyarados, I'm going to have to predict if it's going to Mega or just stay in regular form. Because um, Diamond Blast or Moon Blast would be better, depending on the circumstance there. Um, Weavile, now this is an interesting set. Uh, I have to switch the Berry to Apicot, but I believe that's a um, 100 base power Psychic move. So if the Infernape is a switch into Weavile, if I go for the Natural Gift, that plus Ice Shard should kill Infernape, unless it's like max HP, max defensive. I imagine it's gonna be max HP, but I don't think it's also gonna be like max defensive type of deal. I can see like max HP and then some speed or some attack, some combination of that. Um, so I should kill in return. Downside is I'm not just doing general damage against the rest of the team, like super hard. Like Ice Punch is okay. And I need an Ice Punch uh, compatibility with Natural Gift. Um, Low kick will hit the Mega Gyarados pretty hard, so he might not see that coming. And maybe feels like he's safe to uh, to go into his Mega form instead of Dragon Dance. Is that supposed to, like, Ice Punches should do pretty decent damage to regular Gyarados. Um, Heatran is next. Um, if it is Garboder, then I can leave with a Heatran and just kill with a Z Fire, so make sure Toxic Swags aren't on the field. I do have Rotom Mode Defog, but I prefer to uh, just take out the threat while I can. Um, but Manga Storm also does decent damage to the Uxi. Heatran is unfortunate because like Infernape, Zygarde, and Megadaragos all kind of take advantage of this. Um, at least I have Earth Power from the Infernape and I have Roar if Zygarde's going to be like a substitute set, which I could definitely see coming this game. Um, and his Stealth Rocks to get some chip damage, maybe get the uh, Gyarados before it Megas. Rotom Mo, uh, standard defensive, the Slat Speed, Mega Gyarados. Um, Loud speed, if I get into a Papa Berry range, I'll be pretty healthy, so I should take some hits from the Mega Gyarados. If it's like Ice Fang, I'm not taking a ton, but I should do okay damage. Um, HP likes to hit the Zygarde. If KC predicts like Dual Electric plus Leaf Storm plus uh, like Trek, if he thinks I'm a Scarf set or like Willow Us, I'm like a more defensive set, Pain Split, then at least in power, I should be able to, uh, to hit the Zygarde. Um, and then I have Discharge to like hit the Mega Gyarados anyway. I felt like I didn't really need grass coverage on this. Like I'm okay not hitting the Lantern because I don't think it's going to come. Yuxi, I have Papa Berry similarly. Uh, and this is Trick Room, you turn Toxic, HP Ice. HP Ice to hit the Zygarde, Toxic to hit everything outside the Celesteela. Um, but if Celesteela comes in, I'm going to U-turn on it. Um, and then Trick Room. Trick Room is going to bring in the big threat, which is the Ursaring. Um, if I feel like he's gonna sack something this game, I can go for a substitute um, under the Trick Room. I'm gonna outsell everything on the team. Facade does like a lot of damage to the Celesteela. It probably to it KOs, which is kind of crazy. But Thunder Punch does more damage. Um, it also hits the Mega Gyarados, uh, but I think Facade hits harder. And then Earthquake will hit the uh, Garboder without having to take like Rocky Helmet and Aftermath, if that's the scenario there. Um, I don't have Ice Punch for the Zygarde, but Facade should be doing plenty damage as long as he's not like at 100 percent health then i should be able to kill a facade um and earthring should do pretty decent damage especially if i can get a substitute up um the defense investment in hp allows me to take a banded mock punch from infernape after rocks and like one round of flame orb damage so let's see how this game goes yeah so 
Let's see what you got here. I did a quick team builder to, uh, to show what I'm bringing in this game. Uh, so you just like decided to bring all the threats. <laughs> yep, I was like, give me those top six and we'll just roll with that. All right. Uh, let's lead nice. with... We'll go with this. Yeah, so like... I.I.'s team definitely has like a lot of fun setup options. Yeah, it really does. Maybe not necessarily the uh, the best breakers. Maybe outside of like Zygarde, um, but you don't necessarily either when you have like four pretty legit setup options. Uh, True. And this is one of them. And not sure yeah, what I'm going to do is. against this. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll make the obvious play. <laughs> Oh, going for the Mega right away? Oh, that does nothing. Yeah, it does nothing. Um, I'll go for this. Get the momentum right away. There we go. I like this start. Yep. Get into the, the big threat right here. Uh-oh. Not the Fire Frog. <laughs> What's your answer to this? Uh, good question. Next button? Maybe I should have been prepping. Go, go, go right in the Gyarados, you're fun. <laughs> oh, I just noticed that I still have that um, MTR Stunfisk. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, you were a, a previous captain in this, right? Yes. Yeah, as, a, as was I back in Season 1 and Season 3 of DPL. That's a, <laughs> quite a callback there. Yeah, it really was. Um, do you think you'd ever come back um, to DPL? You think you'd play it again? Good question. I feel like I wouldn't mind signing up as a player one time um, and just both times I played DPL, I, I didn't really feel like doing it. So I, I wouldn't mind joining it at a time where maybe I was more motivated to play. Exactly. Yeah, the, the mental is definitely a, a pretty big component of it. You can right. easily, like, you can, oh, crit, of course. You can easily say you could just not care and play your games and such, but, right. like, you you want to give your all. Because it's a team environment. Um, definitely. And not doing that makes it tough. Ooh, Dragon Dance. We'll go into this. Nice. Oh, I don't think. Am I living this hit? Ooh, nice, nice. Wow, that does nothing. What is this? That really does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> don't be like rest or something. Hey, I'll take oh, that roll. <laughs> I was resto chest though. <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> Too easy. Well, I got the low roll initially, so that's why. Yeah. Yeah. It all balances out. <laughs> all balances out. Um, okay. Now look at this. Is this like a uh, probably memento in the last spot? That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a. Uh, Let's do this. Does DNC take this hit? I don't know. It really depends who this Infernape is. True. Because Infernape could be anything in this game. Uh, right, it really could. Maybe. So I'm imagining he's going to be more like. 
Physically defensive? Oh, that does so much. That does do a lot. Wow. Weakness policy. Oh, that's pretty cool. Is it a... Uh, maybe a flame charge on here? Try to boost the speed? Vacuum wave? Okay. I should live a hit with Heatran. True, definitely. Do I kill? It's the better question. That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's my uh, Granium Z kill. I think it's <laughs> Granium <it's> Z. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't think I have it? <laughs> I'm not, you know. I definitely need it to hit the uh, Inferno. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is that like, a, is this a pretty bulky Inferno or just like speedier? It, it, it is running some bulk. Um, not a ton, but I just figured I would like tack on some just to hopefully um, be able to live a hit especially maybe outside of, of screens but i didn't really come up with any super fancy ev spread yeah no for sure um what to do here yeah that seems like a fine play yep. yeah i forget how like bulky mega gyarados is especially with screens up it takes hits so well oh yeah <laughs> not a fan of it yeah <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> Oh, the taunt. Uh-oh, so taunt, dragon dance, waterfall. It's not looking good for me. Here comes the ringer. We got the big threat in. Just just <laughs> click the X button now. All you can. Oh, it choose it. Choose it. <laughs> <laughs> Living on one That's HP, right. too. I love Ursaring, dude. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, you had it last season, right? For uh, for DPL. Yeah, we had it on at least one team. I know in Oros, um, Tony loves it so much, and he's made us all a fan too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about a? Is it cheaper? To, I guess Zangoose is uh, not doesn't hit as hard as Ursaring does, but it's faster. But I don't True. know what the point difference was. Right. But it has basically the same. I don't think it has fire electric coverage. It has like close combat. True, true. Knock off. And that Mega Gyarados, I'm pretty sure I have like max HP on it. If not max HP, it's it's really? a lot because I had to, I had enough bulk to live um, a Mega Diancy Moonblast. So Ursaring still like did 80% with mm -hmm. Facade. That's that's so sick. Does my Weavile kill right here? I don't know if it does. Dude, I quit I shard. No, I don't think I kill. Uh, I think Yuxi probably doesn't live this hit. Yeah, I'm in blaze range. I think I would kill. Yeah. Oof. That might be the it. Just miss your uh, focus blast. Yeah, I gotta miss focus blast. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> got a ball man here. Yep. And it's looking pretty tough to kill the, the heat train now. That is maybe, true. Maybe the Celeste has got something up its sleeve. <laughs> Perhaps. Let's see, what do I do here? Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah Winter Cut, I don't know. I've never been really a big fan of it. But, yeah, me neither. Like, it has cool utility, I guess. Right. All right, let's just get the para. Oof. 
thinking that's game. I was hoping it would happen. <laughs> I, I wonder if I could live the weave off. <laughs> I definitely do. The uh, scarf had speed, so let's deal it. I think it does, right? Yeah, it does. Oh! oh. <laughs> 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 Definitely deserve that one. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I'll show off the cool tech maybe. Ooh, Yachi Berry. Yep. Oh, that destroys. And now I will um, defeat this Heatran with HP energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I could just miss a shit ton. True. That is true. Oh, <laughs> uh, now you're gonna lower the special attack? Oh, the special attack's been lowered. Oof. <laughs> right. Well, I think they're actually into the game, so. Um, okay, cool. I'll pop that open here. So, yeah, so they have. Is that the same six as you brought? Yes. I believe so, yeah, no Garboder. Which I thought Garboder wasn't that, like, I don't have a Grounded Poison, so I didn't think it was that True. terrible, and, like, physically defensive is, I didn't think it was that yeah. bad this game, but um, I definitely understand it, and I don't think the Lantern was that great yeah. between Gastrodon and Gliscor being yeah. on the team, and Uxie. Like, I don't definitely. think really providing a whole lot. Right. Um, so, what do you think, uh, I mean, I guess we saw all the setup on your team. Is that, you think you're, um, I is going to go with that approach, like screens Uxie into just a bunch of setup sweepers? I don't know if he'll go screens. I, th I think it's a good idea because um, uh, Rob's removal isn't great in something like Rotom. He could potentially memento on before it gets a defog off or something like that. Oh, that's so cool tech. that's one of the reasons I, I like screens in this game. And... Um, I like the Gyarados lead because, yes, Gyarados could take advantage of screens for setup and stuff, but it also is just, um, it immediately pressures him a lot, and it's really hard for him to one-shot, even with stuff like Mega Diancie. Because mm -hmm. you have to figure, well, you could easily just stay in pre-Mega form if he goes for a Moonblast, and it's not doing much, and Waffle is going to do a ton. And I think Mega Diancie is a pretty big threat to his team. Right. Especially, like just rock plus moon blast like all that hits the team pretty well maybe outside the uxie that much but it's not doing a whole lot in return unless if it's like exactly or something yeah so I, I, I think i've seen scarf iron tail in past dpls to handle mega dance <laughs> yes <Definitely. laughs> i don't think it's that common um and they brought no. the gliscor over what did i have the heatran i thought heatran was pretty solid this game especially as like Definitely. a like something to outspeed the Celesteela at the least before it sets yep. up. Um, but I yep. can see it being a little bit of fodder against like the Zygarde, Infernape, Gyarados. He transfers against all of them. All right. That's true. Yeah, I wasn't sure if if he would bring the ringer because... <laughs> <laughs> if you have it, you uh, better bring it. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. I, I It just never has a bad matchup, so it should be brought, but I didn't know if he would just default to like you know, his top six or something like that, if he maybe didn't yeah. feel comfortable using the cursor ring, but no, it's definitely a really good bring here. Yeah, Rob's even said a, the ones that weren't brought were Heatread at Gastron, and like, they're right. not even that bad either. It's a pretty balanced no. team. Yeah. And, but, see, the, I don't think there's a whole lot of creativity in Rob Jr.'s types of builds. Same. I feel like most of the mods are pretty linear in terms of what they're going to do. Um, and like II's team has a lot more flexibility in what different sets mods could run. Exactly. So it's tough to build for this game. Um, so turn one, we see Gyarados against Gliscor. Um, I think, as you were saying before, Gyarados seems like a pretty solid lead, just pressuring anything that could normally potentially lead. Um, right. Even with the DNC, uh, if it was that, like a lead stealth rock set, um, Gyarados threatens that pretty well. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we see switches out to Rotom Mo. Seems like a pretty solid Gyarados yeah. answer, and takes forty percent from a crunch. 
Um, so it's not taking much in the future, unless it's maybe a uh, like an Ayapapa berry set or something like that. Right. That could be fine. Um, yeah. Bolt Switch probably comes off here. I think this is exactly how our game played out. Yeah. We go into the Weavile, which I don't think you click a dark move here um, with the Weavile against Yuxi. It's probably going to live. And I'm. Yeah. Yuxi might not have something in return for the Weavile. Yeah. You think knockoff is pretty free here? Yeah. Um, he, you know, I think because he brought it in, he might as well. I don't know what else mm -hmm. he would go for here. I think he should. Um, I think he probably should, but hopefully, because like, yeah, like you said, Uxie is so bulky that I don't know if it lives a abandoned knockoff. It might, but if it obviously runs Cobra, I don't know if like, you know, it could mm -hmm. thunder wave the wood pile or do something to cripple it. So it's kind of risky, I feel like, to bring in Weavile versus a full health Uxie. Yeah. But Especially I, if it didn't show leftovers. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we'll see. Goes for a knockoff and does... 41% to Infernape. The Drocky Helmet. That's a, That's a lot. Of, that has to be banded, right? Yeah, gotta be. Yeah. But I was saying before, it could be like a more defensive Infernape set to handle the Weavile. Now, I... Right. So partially because I wasn't able to get into my game is because I had a natural gift and some type of weird berry um, that was basically designed to kill Infernape with that into an Ice Shard that's cool um but it looks like they just went banded which is probably safer and does more damage to to everything else at the sacrifice of maybe not dealing with the inferno right. as, as well yeah. uh, maybe like exactly. power herb dig i don't think that's gonna do much to an inferno either yeah, right. uh, <laughs> that'd be kind of cool so i imagine they're yeah. probably gonna just uh slack off here yeah. i think if you're rocky helmet you're probably more defensive yeah. and had something like that yeah. All right, goes for the U-turn on the Gliscor. That makes sense. Best Getting Mega Gyarados. And from there, you could probably just drag and dance or, or something. But he goes for a taunt with the Gliscor. So, does it quite a big chunk. Um, Gliscor is pretty I much like useless in just making sure the Gyarados doesn't set up a Dragon Dance. Um, yep. Pretty aggressive there, but um, if Gyarados does set up a Dragon Dance, we saw that the Crunch did, like, basically 40%. So uh, that could kill the uh, the Rotom, depending on rolls. And he probably yep. loses that point if Gyarados gets a plus one. Because so I don't think Rotom is killing Gyarados. Yep. Yep. I don't know if like a Rotom Leaf Storm plus an Ice Shard from Levi would kill. It might. Yep. depends on how bulky the Gyarados is. Yeah, I, I like how I, I is playing this because I had the same idea where like Gyarados is so bul bulky here and just firing off attacks um versus rob's team could could chip it down pretty well um like he, he didn't get a lot of mileage just by clicking gyarados's dual stabs so i don't i like need what to set up right yeah um and it, yeah even it's it's mold break gyarados so you would if he did bring the gastron on the storm drain wouldn't work right it would just exactly. bypass and just be a neutral hit just so yep yeah. yeah man gyarados he seems pretty tough against this team Yes. Uh, getting rocks up is fine. But that seems like a pretty tough exchange to trade uh, the Rotom or the, the Gliscor just to make sure Gyarados doesn't sweep. Uh, right. I feel like that's the nature of II's team against Robs. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I liked his team matchup. It was a pretty like quick prep session because everything was so threatening. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Rotom Mo comes out to revenge kill. Makes sense. I guess Leaf Storm or Electric Move comes out. Um, yeah. probably none of them kill but Leaf Storm should maybe get in the range of Weavile or at least make sure it's not going to uh, pressure that much so yeah. he goes for a Volt Switch and does 36% that is absolutely yeah. nothing yeah. and just kills the DNT with Waterfall predicting the uh, the Rotom to Volt Switch yep yeah. that was that was one that was that a was good, a good play. play I it was I guess he assumed that Leaf Storm wasn't going to kill so you just assumed he needed the chip damage from Volt Switch in order to least storm the kill in the future. So he predicted the yeah. switch out there. Yeah, that's yeah, that that, was a, a crazy read there. That was great because it wasn't just like a simply like aggressive play, like, oh, I think he might do this. It's, if I, I 
spent some time like scouting Rob or just knows him enough that like that's such a Rob play like Rob would make that kind of play to to you know bring out the Rotom like threaten with Leaf Storm and then like bolt switch and make a, a aggressive mid round into the knowing that Gyarados' best play is probably to crunch or if it has Ice Fang maybe he can go for that but um I, I seems like he knew that that's something that Rob in particular would do and really punished him with the waterfall that was a great play exactly yeah so Rob's definitely on the back foot here Yep. It looks pretty tough. And say, even if Rotom comes in here, which it's probably coming in here. Uh, yeah, Rotom comes in here. If you go for Leaf Storm and get this kill, like, you just set up a free Zygor to get a substitute or Celesteela to uh, set up an Autonomize. It's not looking great for you. Right. Um, so let's see what the Rotom goes for. Goes for Leaf Storm. Doesn't even kill the Gyarados. Wow. Yeah, Gyarados is so fast. And just gets a really big hit off. Um, honestly, it might might not be bad. It depends what the Zerodim is. We don't. We assume it's Scarf at this point, right? So maybe he's able to get a, even like a switch out and make sure that the Rotom's not at minus four special attack and doesn't get set up on by the yeah. next whatever setup sweeper of choices for for II. Yeah. Um, so in the next play, oh, it's Custap Barry. Cast that Barry Rotom. What's that going to do? Just go for a Volt Switch. As he switches into Zygarde. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I imagine it's probably a more bulky Zygarde spread if you're going to make that play and just set up a Substitute or a Dragon Dance just then and there. Yep. Um, in case it was like Electric Coverage and went for a Volt Switch or something like that. Um, right. So now he is forced to... Uh, Let's switch out or let the Zygarde set up a bunch. He's going to go for a thousand arrows. And does 30%? Um, that might be Choice Banded Zygarde. Uh, let me pull up the calc. That looks like Ban. If it's like Fizzly Defensive Uxie. Uh, yeah, a thousand air should do like twenty one to twenty five percent. So maybe it's maybe it's like admin or maybe like a high roll, or maybe Uxi isn't um max physically defensive. So maybe yep. not banded. Right. Um we'll see. Um sacking off the Gyarados here is fine. Goes for reflect. So uh Rob is setting up the reflects here. Um Yeah. And I I guess it has to be for Ursaring. I'm not really sure what... Are you trying to set up a sword stance with Weavile? I mean, I guess the Reflect just because a lot of I.I.'s team is physically attacking based outside of maybe like a Special Infernape, which I think is fair this game. And I guess Special Celesteela can also work. But yeah, if it's like I an think. Autonomized Sweeper, you generally... I would generally think um, Celesteela would probably be more physically based. Um, but not necessarily. Yeah, um, true. The, the one thing that was really nice was um, Giga Drain versus his team. Yes. Yeah, that did a lot yep. of damage. And, like, if you want Earthquake to hit the Heatran, you probably don't even need much attack. Exactly, that's what I did. To hit it. So, like, Earthquake, Giga Drain, and Fly. Probably all, all the moves you really need. Yep. Um, so you see Uxie versus Uxie here. Um, let's see if I also sets up screens or what the uh, the play is. Goes for rocks. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Weavile comes in aggressively, but not much of a concern there behind Reflect. Um, Ice Cold Crash. Yeah, we definitely know it's banded at this rate. Um, but gets the flinch on the Uxie. Um, probably not. I mean, it could be like Thunder Wave Uxie, as you were mentioning before, and that would be pretty unfortunate. But um, I think I, I could play around this for sure. Yeah, definitely. He's in a good spot. Yeah. Now he knows that it's banded. Um, and Inferno can come in here. We saw a U-turn. It could be um, vacuum but it's probably going to be uh, physical. Um, so if you get flinched here, that might be problematic if you don't have, like, Mock Punch. Right. But I imagine if you bring it in here, 
Well, you could also just rely on making sure you don't get the flinch, and then you, you probably win the game at that point if you get a fighting move off. Yep. yep. Um, so we'll see what happens. And he's going to switch out the Weavile yep. as he goes for a mock punch. So he does have it. Okay, that makes yep. a lot of sense there. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Which isn't a thing here. Mm -hmm. Rob's not not looking great. Um, he has to reflect up in the Uxie. Still has the Ursaring, so when there's a Ursaring, there's a way. Um, yeah, exactly. Yep. And it is a uh, trick room Uxie, and we see the Infernape is a uh, Miss Slack off, which which I kind of figure there. Yeah. Um, Good prep. Yeah, but now this Uxie is a uh, faster as it goes for a U-turn under Reflect or under Trick Room. Um, I don't even know what you go into here because something's dying. To no, right. If it's close combat, something's dying, and Mod right. Punch probably two KOs. Um, New Year's ring. Um, he's gonna go yeah. into the earth ring, yeah. and he goes for a U-turn. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like a fighting move was pretty safe there. Yeah, what? I wonder what his. I wonder, like you know, what his last move is. Yeah, U-turn, mock punch, slack off. What else is there? I mean, there's like a Gliscor plus Gastrodon. Yeah. I don't know if you like try to run in power ice. And maybe two. Yeah. I I don't even know if it's special defense. If it's you probably don't two a KO. Yeah, I really I, I feel like it's probably got to be a fighting move, but I don't know. Yeah, um, we'll see the Inferno view turn out into Celestila. That'll take a hit, um, but I think Ursaring under Trick Room should come out one on one on this exchange. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Ursaring is bulk up. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And Giga Drain does not much <laughs> to the Earth Ring. Um, yeah. So bulk up. Huh. I don't know what cause I don't think you I don't think Earth Ring kills with any one hit, like a thunder punch. More right, yeah. Feel, huh. Is it That's compressed talk? And just like facade is mono coverage? I would doubt that. Right, yeah, because like facade doesn't even get the boost from being asleep right yeah no it doesn't yeah so i don't know what this earth ring is uh it's gonna go for a thunder punch but yeah i figured celestia would did the hit it gets paralyzed um but it gets the giga drain off um instead of point to where the earth ring um we'll pick up the kill on the celestia but we'll probably die everything will probably die to the infernape right after this right um it looks like celestia had protect so maybe a more um defensive spread there. I feel like plus one Thunder Punch did a lot though to the Celesteela. Maybe uh, Earthring is really that strong. Yeah. yeah, it's so freaking strong, but that that's weird that they went, he went for bulk up instead of Swords Dance. Oh yeah, Swords Dance is definitely an option too. Yeah. Maybe, I don't even know. Maybe it's designed as like yeah. maybe he's trying to sack, if I I sacking something off, he goes for a bulk up and then maybe right. it puts it at a range of like a an Infernape Mock Punch. Right, right. So, like, that might be a play. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I th I, on my Earthring, I had Substitute, um, which I felt nice. basically yeah. accomplished that thing, saying if you're going to sack something off, might as well get a Substitute up. Right, good point. And force it and make it harder to a uh, revenge kill. So the Whimsic like comes it. off here. Um, yeah. Gets the Moonblast kill, and I think the game is over at this rate. Um, yeah, I think sure. so, too. Yeah. Oh, it's Scarf's Winsicott. Either that, or it's like an adamant Weavile, and um, didn't add speed. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. <laughs> what'd you? Yeah, I think. what do you think? I think that it was it was a good game. I think II was just way more prepared. I think that's a, so, like a pattern that I've noticed in Rob Junior's. Um, just history throughout draft is like he's had a lot of highs and lows and he's one of the you know, very talented people in, in draft format but there are times where either he just can't be bothered or even when he can he uses teams like you said that are pretty linear you, you know what a lot of the Pokemon are going to do and Rob kind of relies on his um, playing you ability. know just his playing ability and his um you know, knowledge of the standard metagames to use like relatively common and predictable sets that 
that work well and I, I really took advantage of that in this game by just um, out prepping him having a more of a clear game plan whereas Rob was just kind of going in hoping to um, you know outplay him a little bit and once I started getting some or gaining some ground with the Gyarados and then um, killed the Diancie before it ever got to do anything I think that was kind of like the, the nail in the coffin pretty early on Oh yeah, I definitely agree there. Once the TNT was down, like, what's Rob's game plan? Like, like how is he going to try to win that game at that point? Yep, exactly. Um, like, it was, it was a good game because it's not like Rob did really poorly. It was just that mm -hmm. I was, I think, a lot more prepared and he had a good matchup. So it was a pretty decisive victory. Yes, definitely agree. Um, but I'm sure Rob Jr. will bounce back. Uh, definitely wouldn't underestimate him in the slightest. Definitely, he's amazing. Yeah, and it's only week one, so we've still got plenty of time here. Um, of course. But, yeah, thank you, Maddie, for joining us. This this was a lot of fun. Anytime. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, I'd, uh, go check out, uh, I think, uh, is the UDL uh, YouTube channel still still around? Yeah, it's still floating around. Hopefully I will um, you know, continue to upload content on it. I didn't do it as much for for season four because I was caught up with some stuff, but I, I yeah. plan to definitely get back to it at some point. And, and it's still on my docket to try to, to upload my uh, my last season's run uh, of UDL. You should. <laughs> we'll see if we get to it, but I really want to get to it. I wanted to get to a season three and I just didn't get to it. So I definitely will for season four. Um, awesome. Can't wait. But yeah, all right. Uh, thank you, Maddie. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week for uh, week two. Let me know below who uh, I, I think someone already uh, bullied themselves into the way of doing this for week two, but uh, we'll see who do, will do it for week three and, and uh, beyond. Uh, give me nice. some suggestions. <laughs> All right, take care. <laughs> All right, later. Later.